Good evening. If I can get a sound check, please. If anyone's out there and can hear me, please type a yes or a Y in the question box. Let me know someone's there and that I'm just not speaking to myself. Anyone out there? Yes. Ah, excellent. Excellent. We have someone out there. Everything seems to be working. Welcome to Awanda's free webinars. Tonight is Pinpointing Trading Opportunities with Fibonacci. Get a click on that. Scroll down one. There we go. Uh, today's webinar, I'm sorry, let me introduce myself. My name is Roger. I am with Trade with Precision, and we are presenting this webinar tonight in conjunction with Awanda. And this is being recorded and will be available for you to review at your leisure afterwards. Uh, this is an interactive webinar so that if you do have questions on any particular slide that's showing, uh, please do not hesitate to ask for clarification. Also, there will be time at the end of the webinar to ask questions that relate to today's presentation. So with that, let's move on down the line, we do have two disclaimers. <clears throat> the first one, oh, I, uh, let me mention this and apologize up front. I am trying to work through a cold, so if uh, you hear a pause in the presentation, it probably means that I muted it so that I'm not coughing in your ear. Uh, hopefully, I will uh, catch that in time and uh, apologize for that in advance. Okay, let's move on. Two disclaimers, the first one from Oanda. Leverage trading carries a high risk, high degree of risk. Carefully consider your financial objectives, level of experience, and appetite for such risk prior to entering this market. You may lose more than you invest, and you do not own or have any interest in the underlying asset. This presentation is for general information purposes. It is not investment advice. That is very important. Some examples shown are for illustrative purposes only and may not reflect current prices or offers from Oanda. It is important that you accept these disclaimers. If you choose not to, uh, you may uh, leave at this time. The second one is from Trade with Precision. Please read through this. It's very similar in concept to the disclaimer from Oanda. It says that investing is risky. You can lose money. Uh, please, before you do put money on the table, that you have the education to be successful. And there is a lot in that uh, if you are new to trading. So please, we want you to be successful. And to do that, you must have education, which obviously you're interested in because you are here today. So why Oanda? Well... You obviously chose them for the webinar today. Let's, if you're not from, <clears throat> excuse me, familiar with Oanda, a little bit more about them. They do offer competitive spreads in the forex market. It's on these spreads that the brokers are in the, making their money. So the tighter the spread, the better for a trader to be more profitable. Wide spreads are going to mean you've got to overcome that slippage before you are able to make money. Exceptional execution. Oanda is a fast trade in their execution, and it is fully automated. So when you ex put in your trade, it's going to go through quickly, and you will get the best price that's possible. They do have an award-winning mobile trading platform. And this is for people on the go, and they want to stay in touch with their positions, but they're not able to sit in front of a computer during the day. Mobile is the new way to go, and it's nice to see that Awanda has an award-winning platform. Open and transparent in that Awanda makes their market data, the order book, and all costs visible so that you have full knowledge of what you're getting into in terms of the costs for your positions, your trades. They are regulated, and this is a highly regulated industry. And as a worldwide entity, Oanda is tightly regulated by no less than seven different global regulatory bodies. So that gives you the confidence to know that 
somebody else has your back. So if you are not familiar with OANDA and you are looking for a broker, here is the page that you want to pay attention. Uh, you can register for a trading account or you can also register for a practice account. And if you are not that experienced in trading, I highly recommend, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, going through a practice account, particularly if you are new to Forex. Practice accounts are great. They let you do make the trades. You're not putting any money at risk, and you find out what works and doesn't work. Two different uh, websites on there that you can make a note of if you prefer to use the phone four different phones there, phone numbers that you can give them a call and because Forex is 24 hours, you can call them virtually any time. If you didn't get down what you needed to, this will be shown at the very end as well. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about the Fibonacci sequence. What is a Fibonacci? How did it come about? How does it work? What's it, what is it? Well, we're going to look at trends. Very important that we look at trends because Fibonacci only works with trends. So if we have trends, we have the potential to utilize the Fibonacci. Moving averages, very important. Obviously related to trends, telling us which way the trend is going. We can see it for our eyes, but it's nice to have confirmation, and this is where the moving averages can come into play. Fibonacci retracements. This is utilizing the Fibonacci tools in a manner of looking at charts and now putting them to work for us on the charts to see if it falls within their parameters. Clusters of support and resistance. If you have one line of support and resistance, well, that's helpful and that can be good. But if you have clusters, now you're looking at a greater ability and a greater probability of how everything's going to potentially play out. And if we can improve our odds, then that is a big incentive. We'll have a live platform demonstration. I'll have a look at two different platforms for you. So you can see if one's better for another. And look at how Fibonacci plays out on those in a live demonstration with the actual charts of what's going on today. Lastly is the forward thinking traders. And if you wish to take your education to the next level, OANDA has the potential for you. And we'll show you that and give you some ideas of something to think about and maybe that will something that will work for you. So Fibonacci sequence, predicting patterns. And that's what it's all about is we're trying to make predictions, but not just predictions, but highly probable predictions, and that's going to give us greater chance of success in our trading. So, if you don't like saying the full name of Fibonacci, we'll say, what is a Fib? And unlike uh, little Fibs that the little kids tell, this is just obviously short for the Fibonacci. So a Fibonacci sequence is merely a number that is the sum of the previous two numbers in the sequence. Every sequence starts with zero. So zero, the next number is one. If you add zero and one together, you get one, or the third number in the sequence. And I'll put my cursor down here. So the zero adding to this equals one. If we add one and one together, we get two. Adding two and one, we get three, so on and so forth. And as you can see, Obviously, the incremental differences between the digits increases over time. And the ratio of these is known as the golden ratio, and that ratio is the 1.618. And eventually, it's a successive uh, convergence that reaches that with time. The golden ratio, not just a math, but obviously a math, um, but it actually appears in nature and science. Let's take a little bit of that. Many patterns have a predictive nature, a predictive value, excuse me, in nature. The shape of the Nautilus shell, you may be familiar with this. It's sort of a, um, 
roundabout, if you will, starts tightly wound up and then coils itself back on itself and gets bigger and bigger, that is a Fibonacci ratio. Also, sunflower seed patterns. If you ever to, were to look at a sunflower seed at the, at the top of the stalk, those patterns are in the Fibonacci ratio and sequence. Spiral leaf growth is Fibonacci. Growth rates of honeybee colonies, all following this nature's perfect ratio. Shapes of spiral galaxies, and the list obviously goes on. Fibonacci numbers have also been found to describe patterns in the financial markets. Yay, something we can yeah, finally use instead of just honeybee colonies. But before we apply fibs to analyzing market patterns, let us revisit the pattern itself, or the trend. And in order to look at trends, we want to look at technical analysis. And this is key. What is a trend? Financial markets move due to an imbalance between supply and demand, sellers and buyers. So when supply exceeds demand, prices fall, meaning price has gone up, no more buyers are out there, people are looking to get out of their positions, they start pushing their sell orders out into the market, not enough buyers are there to purchase those sell orders, and in order to entice buyers to buy that market, the price is going to fall. Conversely, the same thing. When demand exceeds supply. So something happens and everybody wants to get into a market. That demand pushes up prices because there aren't enough sellers to satisfy the buyers. Therefore, prices rise to entice people to sell. Obviously, prices do not move in a straight line for very long. They frequently move in cycles or waves known as trends. And it's the geometry of trends that is often characterized by Fibonacci ratios. So trend trading is a favorite technique among technical traders. They want to find a trend and trade with it because they anticipate that the trend will continue. However, without a clear understanding of how to determine the start and continuation of a trend, other technical tools can become more difficult to apply. Convergence and divergence, those can be helpful tools to tell us whether the trend is continuing or is not expected to continue. Chart and candlestick patterns, looking at the chart just visually, first instinct, what's, what's it telling you? Candlesticks, knowing what the candlesticks are telling you. If you're not familiar with candlesticks, that may be something you might want to look into. Obviously, there are a number of ways that we can set up our charts. Uh, candlesticks are one good way to get more information from price action. And then, obviously, Fibonacci analysis. And we're going to look at that, of course. But you need a regular trend for the Fibonacci analysis to be meaningful. We all know that there are only three types of trends, meaning after any given candle, there's only three ways the next candle can go. It can go up, down, or sideways. And if we have enough of those in the line, then it's going to create an uptrend or a downtrend, or it's just going to go sideways. So, an uptrend is bullish, or also called going long. <coughs> Excuse me. An uptrend is where price is making successive higher highs and higher lows. And once that price breaks above the level of the prior high, a new uptrend has begun. So, for example, we start down here. In this example, this is our low, our starting point. Market's moving up. We're bullish. We hit a line. We say, okay, we're enough of that. We're going to sell. But this creates our high. No more buyers come in. Everybody wants to sell and make their profits up in here, so the sellers sell off. But people look down here and say, hey, I think this is going to go higher. Buyers start to come in and create a higher low. This low is obviously higher than this one. 
more buyers come in, it pushes up beyond the level of the previous high. This creates the obvious higher high, pulling back this higher low and moving on, etc. So in this uptrend, with this formation, we would expect, potentially, that our trend would stop somewhere higher than this higher low and then continue up. And this is where we want to look to see can we get in on that trend and make money. This is just the opposite now, in a downtrend, bearish or you're going short. And just opposite, the downtrend is where price makes excessive lower highs and lower lows. And only until the price breaks below the level of the prior low has a new drown, downtrend begun. So just the opposite now, instead of a low, we have a high. Sellers are coming in. They want to get out of the market. It gets low enough where buyers say, hey, then maybe this is a good price. But not enough buyers come back in. So now sellers come back. They say, we want out. They're comparing this high with this high. In comparison, it is a obviously a lower high. Pushes down past the level of this low to create a lower low, and we now have a downtrend. And with our lower high, we have a lower low again. Coming back up, potentially we have this continuing because we assume that this is a downtrend is going to continue. We've had a retracement. We might be looking to get in on the downtrend there. So now we talked about no trend. So it's just going sideways, or it's the swings are really high. There is no trend, which means we have no clear succession of highs or lows. So charts that exhibit this pattern, in hindsight, are going to be even harder to predict going forward. So as we can see on the chart, we start out with a low, we create our high, there's our baseline, so now everything is related to that. We come down to a higher low, so we're thinking, well, if this turns around, which it started to, we have the potential for an uptrend. However, prior to breaking that, clear that mark here, right here, Prior to breaking that high, it stops and reverses. So we have a lower high, and then it goes down to a lower low. So now the potential is that it might be a downtrend, except it turns around and goes higher. So now we went higher high rather than a lower high. So we have no trend because we cannot determine where we're going next. So technical analysis continues, we want to look at moving averages. And moving averages can be very helpful in telling us directions and trends and strength of trends. We first start out with geometry of the moving average. Generally, there are four moving averages, two on a short time frame, meaning our 10 period and 20 period moving averages. And we say period because these can be used in any time frame, meaning we can use a 10-period moving average on a weekly chart, a daily chart, a five-minute chart. It doesn't matter. It's still a 10-period moving average. 20-period is also short. Intermediate time frame on a given chart is the 50, and then the long term would be a 200. These averages are a lagging indicator but they can be a handy tool to identifying trending time frames. It might be easy if you color code, if you're starting out, color code your moving averages, and that will help you to have a faster scan of your charts. And you'll see uh, on the charts that we pull up on the uh, live uh, demonstration that I have on my charts the moving averages, and I have them color coded. And that makes it easy because I know which one is which. And then I can just look more quickly at that and determine which way we're going and what other information that they can tell me. Moving averages are lagging. And that's important to understand. It's not a leading indicator. They are lagging. I mean, it's telling you what happened in the past. Moving averages simply take 
Uh, I have a question. Yes, Jacob, go right ahead. Shoot it in there. Type away. I'll keep talking until I see that. Um, so moving average, for example, the 10-period moving average um, is simply the last 10 prices on those periods and add them together and uh, divide by 10, and that equals that point on the moving average line. And here is the question. Long and short here doesn't mean the same as short and long in buying and selling. That is correct. Um, so if in buying and selling, if we are long, then we are buying. And if we are short, we are selling. So on, in terms of moving averages, and I'm glad you're asking the question. That's great. This just means how many periods are in that moving average. So I mentioned the 10-period moving average. That's short because there aren't many, there's not a lot of time. There's only 10 periods in that. So, for example, on a weekly chart, for example, the 10 period average would be the adding of the 10 weeks. The 10 weekly averages come together for that single point. And then because it's a moving average, you add the newest period and drop the oldest period. And that creates a moving average, and that gives, excuse me, and that gives you your line on the chart that you'll see. So this refers to time frame uh, versus uh, direction uh, on the chart. Good. Uh, glad I could help you with that. Okay, let's move on. So we also want to look at the geometry of moving averages. Because if you have good moving average geometry, you will have a potentially good trend that we can participate in. So on the left here, we see the chart and obviously the candles. And it doesn't take too long to look at that and say, OK, that's a downtrend. Prices are lower as we go along. And good moving average geometry means that the moving averages are in the so-called right order. And in a downtrend, the 10 period moving average is going to be, and always is, a faster moving average because it's only 10 periods that are looking. So it's more susceptible to change in price. The 20 period average is also faster, but it's going to be not as fast as the 10 because there are twice as many periods in that to average it out more, the 50 and then the 200. So the 200 is going to be the slowest moving average and will change the least on any given big move just on one candle. So when we say in the right order, and with that, the 10 period moving average being the faster moving average is going to follow the trend of price action more quickly. So in a downtrend, you would expect to see the 10 period average lower than all your other moving averages. Conversely, the 20 period average is going to be lower than the 50 period moving average and lower than the 20. So when we say the right order in the downtrend, the 10 is below the 20, is below the 50, is below the 200. Looking at that, we say, okay, this confirms that we are in a downtrend, but not only a downtrend, but a good downtrend in the sense that there's potential here to take advantage of this trend for a trade. That's the fanning pattern. Are they all spread out? Or are they all bunched one on top of each other? They may all be going in the same direction, but if they're all bunched on top of each other, they're not spread out. They're not able to work as well in terms of giving us the information that we want of where to enter our trades. We need space between the moving averages. And we see that on this chart. We've got a space between the 10 and the 20. It's a space between the 20 and the 50. And there's a big space there between the 20, or excuse me, and the 50 and the 200. The bigger the space, the faster the move. And what's important also is that they're fanning at similar angles. It's not jagged. So it's a good trend. It's something that is potentially to be predictable. And that helps. So the geometry, good moving average geometry, accompanies good trends, and that's what we'll be looking for. So let's look at spotting good trends. We have six different time frames on here. And just take a moment 
and look at these. And based on what we just talked about in the moving averages, spot which time frames are likely to have a good trend only based on the moving averages. And we've got the one minute, 5, 15, 30, 60, and the 240 minute charts. What's important is that the time frame is irrelevant. And it also is not important that it's the Aussie dollar versus the US dollar. What's important is that it is a chart. And that's what we want to look at as a concept. So looking at the right side of each of these charts on the one and the five minute, we see that there is spacing. They are all in the right direction. So we have a downtrend in the one minute, five minute. The 15 minute has crossed our time frames, or our, excuse me, our moving averages have crossed. So we need more time on that time frame for things to develop and to be better. The 30 is all spaced out. 60 looks good. 240, again, we have a crossover. So that may not be what we're looking for. Looking at the moving averages is a quick way to scan for charts that might have good trends. Using this, now we're just following the same moving averages. Now we're just adding the price action onto the charts. This is the same thing. It's our Aussie dollar. And we see that our 15 and our 240, we have the crosses. So it's not as good as chart as the 1 and 5 minute, 30 and 60 minute, in order to make our trades. A little bit about the mobile Forex and CFD trading. So if you are on the go and you are not able to stay in front of your computer, you can still track the market, you can analyze trends, and spot moving average patterns with Oanda's free mobile apps. These are available on the iPad, the iPhone, and Android, so that you can take these wherever you go. And what I think is important is that in the year 2016, what we just ended, they were the winner of highest overall client satisfaction and best value for your money by Investment Trends, US FX Report, Foreign Exchange. Also, winner of the world's best retail foreign exchange platform, FX Week, the EFX Week's awards in 2016. That's fabulous. That gives you great confidence if you're choosing to get involved with Oanda. The mobile apps allow you to trade from anywhere. Uh, back up to a question. What about the little gap between the 50 and 200 on the 60? Is that significant? Back up here. On the 60, uh, let's see, it said 60. So I'm looking at the 60. Um, so, yeah, so the 200 is coming up from below. So the long-term trend the, the, um, is just catching up now to the other averages. And that's why you see the 200 down below. Uh, not necessarily. Um, the big three would be the 10, 20, and 50, um, depending on your time frame. If you're doing a 60-minute chart, 200 period moving average isn't terribly uh, important. Good to know, um, but if you're doing tight trades, it depends on what kind of trading you're doing. So that's a it's a individual type of thing, depending on how you play it out. Hope that helps. And mobile forex. So crucial trading features. Why was it supported? We have tick by tick quotes. There are order limits, so you can get in and out at your appropriate things. You don't have to be watching the charts tick by tick. And the updated count balances tells you where you are. You can perform advanced technical analysis, multiple chart types, technical indicators. You talked about the moving averages. Uh, drawing tools. They have drawing tools in it, so you can get a trend line if you need to do so, which gives you support and resistance levels. You can look at other patterns as well, and all these are available on your mobile app. So here's our, I think that's the uh, sunflower seed. You can see our swirling Fibonacci pattern in there. But let's take us a step further now and go into retracements. 
So we want to look for leading indicators, because leading, as the name suggests, are going to tell us what to anticipate. So after a move up or down, the market has to pull back or retrace. No market goes in one direction forever. Fibonacci is potentially a useful leading indicator for trend traders once you know how to use it correctly. As a part of a strategy, the Fibonacci can provide precise trade entry points, and that's ideal to help with our decision making. It can give a preferred stop loss levels, very important. Potential target levels, see how far this is going to run. Orderly trends tend to have a pattern of two steps forward and one step back. If we think about that, we have an uptrend here on our screen. If you don't have two steps up and one step back, you're not going to be going in the bullish direction. So that's why we say two steps forward, one step back. That's sort of the step that we base upon for our Fibonacci retracements. So drawing a fib on an uptrend. Fibs should always end at the extremes. So you're not picking a point willy-nilly. You're looking at swing highs or lows. The most recent higher high in an uptrend is a great thing. So here, an example, our end point is our higher high of this uptrend. We see the chart moves up. We have our sellers come in, and that's where we're going to end. Where we start is our low point, our swing low, where the sellers got taken over by the buyers, pushed it up. This is our range in which to determine our retracements under the Fibonacci sequence. Fibs should start at the most recent low. This gives you their swing lows at for higher time frames. This is obviously for the uptrend. They only have meaning when drawn in an orderly trend. So it has to have it be a good trend in order to make a difference. Sideways trends aren't going to help us. Downtrend, just the opposite. We always end at the extreme. That part, as a general concept, holds forth. So our extreme in this one, being in the downtrend, is our lowest point. So our swing low down here at the bottom. But we start our FIB retracement at our previous higher high, or excuse me, lower high, because this is a downtrend, so that's a lower high. So we start at the lower high, we end at the lower low, our extreme, and we see how far we've retraced, or how far we've come back to our starting point. And that's what we want to look at. And again, See, the retracements are not suitable for ranging markets. It's too hard to tell. So now, the 50% is used within Fibonacci, but going back and doing the numbers, it is not a Fibonacci number. However, it is and it represents the midpoint of equilibrium in a trend. And many times we will find that stocks will retrace to that 50% level. Therefore, it was added to the Fibonacci retracements because it is useful. Key retracements, the 61.8%, the golden ratio, is many times used for points. And we will see some on charts that it can, it's not going to happen every time. Nothing does. However, when things are working in that order, it does give you that benefit of a higher probability trade. When price retraces to that 61.8, there's a good chance that it may not go any further. And therefore, possibly, we'll have to look at other things, obviously. You can't use it in and of itself. But looking at that, we'll say maybe this is a chance for retracement, and it's going to continue with that trend. So in this case... We have a downtrend, we have our extreme low, it's retraced, and on our Fibonacci we see that this has come back and holding at that 618% retracement. Now price has gone a little above it a few times, but it has not closed 
close enough, uh, above that level. So we're creating some resistance here at this level. So potentially, this might look good. The sweet spot. Everybody likes the sweet spot. Traders have observed that trends often pull back to this sweet spot. And that sweet spot is between that 50% and 61.8% lines before resuming their advance. So in this example, we see that we pulled back. After going up, we have a bull trend here. We have higher highs, higher lows. That's an uptrend. And now we do our Fibonacci from our extreme low to our extreme high, or excuse me, swing low to extreme high, and then see where the retracement lines fall. And we see that the bottom of that candle hit between the 50 and the 618 retracement, right in that sweet spot. So when we look at other things to, uh, to consider for our trade, support and resistance as an example, the sweet spot can provide potential entry opportunities. Other retracements, and there's a number, 23.6 and a 38.2, are considered shallow pullbacks and not commonly used in the shorter time frames. The 38.2 can be used when combined with others, and we'll show that later. But in and of itself, we generally find that on a, on a retracement, they'll more likely than not go beyond 38.2. Like for example, here it stopped at the, that. Uh, let me mark that with my cursor. This red candle here closed right there at the 38.2. Well, that's great, but. We know that this can be shallow, and we can ex potentially expect this price action to go further. And in this case, it did hit that sweet spot before retracing. 38.2 can be predictive, but we're going to look at that in conjunction with other frames, other retracements. The 78.6 generally don't use for entry points because if something's gone that far, it's gone beyond the sweet point, and it may not be coming back. Retracements have a greater tendency to potentially come back to the starting point if you're reaching that 78.6. However, we can still use it as a stop loss. So, for example, in this case, if we got in... Uh, at that 38.2, say for example, as our entry, maybe we use the 78.6 as a potential stop loss because we know that price may pull back into the 618 retracement. And if it breaks that and holds the 78.6, then we may be good for the future in terms of reversing going back in our direction. 100% means that the move has reversed completely back to the starting point. This can also be a common stop loss level and offers further protection for a stop loss in the swing high or low of the trend by adding extra weight to that. So depending on how you're playing your stop losses, those are two considerations. So back to the mobile. Drawing a Fibonacci's on the go is possible. So if we look at our example over here, I'm using my cursor here for the screenshot, down in the lower right-hand corner, you see the drawing button, if you will. And if you select that, then FR, standing for Fibonacci Retracement, will pop up. If you tap on the swing low to begin your drawing, and then tap again, on the swing high to complete the Fibonacci, it'll all be filled in. If you miss it a little bit, you can adjust it by tapping and drag to get it at the extremes and your swing lows. And then you can see where it comes out. Uh, this obviously is in hindsight because it's gone beyond. Uh, this would have been looking at trades coming back into here for the retracements prior to this 
continuation move. So capital management, and this is very important uh, because people have and will continue to unfortunately blow out their trading accounts. And if you do that, then nobody wins on that. So effective capital management can assist traders in surviving in markets where outcomes are uncertain. Capital management encompasses all, and I stress, all aspects of managing trading capital, including using a stop loss. If you are learning to trade, I recommend highly learning about stop losses. If you're just getting into Forex trades, learn where those stop losses are going to be with you. Maybe it's different, maybe it isn't. Trailing stops can be helpful. You don't have to be looking at the charts. You can plug that in and it's going to work for you. Reducing your trading size to limits that are commensurate with the amount of capital allotted to your trades. Don't, this is not an all-in approach. Uh, this is not gambling at the tables. Uh, you have to be able to match your size with your capital. A percentage, 2%, no more per trade. Limiting market exposure during times of high volatility. If the market's going crazy, well, maybe you've got to tighten things up and, and uh, minimize your trading. And adopting a measured approach to trading where it's not willy-nilly and, and, oh, I feel good about this, so I'm going to put more into that. You need to be consistent. And it's in for the long trade because you want to be doing this the rest of your lifetime. Uh, so you want to develop good habits. What's unfortunate is that fewer than 25% of the transactions placed use stop-loss orders. And that probably should be 100%. Uh, if you're putting in an order, you want to use a stop loss to protect you from greater loss than you anticipate. Clusters. And this is where we start to pull things together. So causes of support and resistance in that orders, in general, are often placed at or near obvious price points. People see big round numbers that end in zeros. Uh, for example, in the dollar CAD, we have a dollar, which is parity. 16,000 on the US Dow, we're pushing 20,000 now. Uh, big numbers on gold, we're looking at 1,200, 13, 14. Anything with those round numbers on the end, the zero zeros, that's attracts people. And they put their trades in there, either getting in or getting out. Uh, so those can be create areas of support and resistance. We also want to look back on a chart and see prior areas of true support and resistance, that being the horizontal lines. Where is price stopped in either direction? We look at different time frames. We look at the daily charts, weekly charts. We look for highs and lows. If we're long-term traders, maybe we even look at monthlies. So, I apologize there, I need a little water, they're getting dry. Uh, causes of support and resistance. What, what happens that creates these areas? Well, recent swing highs and lows in any time frame. Price moves up, it's moving up, buyers run out, sellers come in, we have a swing high. Well, when we can back up there, that may be an area where people are thinking, nah, I'm not sure I want to go higher than this, and it pulls back, perhaps. That's creating your resistance. Fibonacci retracements, especially that 50 and 61.8, the sweet spot. Pivot points. We look at pivot points based on prior daily, weekly, or monthly values. Creates areas that are not only psychological but math where people are looking to limit their exposure because that's where people are buying or selling. We have another question. How many times has the price to touch a level to be classified as support and resistance? That's an excellent question. Generally speaking, in order to create a level of support and resistance, we look for three touches. And 
if you know back from your geometry, two points make a line. So on a chart, we could pick any two points and it creates a line, but it does not mean that it is a true support or resistance. Therefore, we look for that third point to create that line of support or resistance. Good question. Moving on with clusters, it's when there are multiple reasons for orders to appear at a certain price point, where price is more likely, obviously never certain, to face resistance. The more reasons, the greater the likelihood. And a cluster is a stack of reasons accumulating in pro close proximity. It is useful to use the 50 and the 618 levels together looking for clusters on the Fibonacci retracements. So for a Fibonacci cluster, we obviously have to have two Fibonacci retracements. And they may be drawn from the same end point from prior swing highs in the downtrend or lows in an uptrend. So you're going to use the same end point, but you'll, your starting point will vary or be different between your two retracements. When FIB levels, levels are, uh, separate, the sets fall in close proximity. This creates a cluster. And trend traders expect price to react more strongly to that level. So we want those trends. We're looking for reasons to catch our areas of support and resistance and places to place our trades. So identifying clusters enables traders to provide additional protection for a stop or avoiding resistance on the way to a target. If you think it's going up but you've got a cluster in the way, you may not want to take that trade. Traders typically should not wait and watch while price turns around at a cluster. By then, it's too late. If you wait for a price to do what you thought it would, you probably miss the trade. Good traders anticipate an entry ahead of the cluster with as many technical factors as possible supporting the trade decision. So that's why we look at clusters. If we can get a bunch of them together, that improves our probability. Good stop loss locations, as we mentioned before, maybe behind the 78.6, maybe behind the 100% if you're a little bit more conservative. So let's combine some multiple elements. And we have a chart here. We see an uptrend, we see the retracement, and price has come back into that sweet spot of the 50 and 6.8. We also have a level of support and resistance. And we, as we track across that dark black line, right in the middle of our sweet spot, we see where it's had the touches, so we know it's legitimate. And when the sweet spot and the support overlap, traders look for further signs that the retracement will end and the trend will resume to build their trading decision. So what else does it have? Noting that this same level is also a big number adds further weight to a potential trade. So if that support and resistance was at the 1.600, that is a big number. People are going to be attracted to that. We can see where they hit before and stopped. So in looking at this, where would the next FIB line be drawn if we're looking to form a cluster? So we're looking at an uptrend. So our endpoint is always the same. So we come down here with my cursor. This is our endpoint. This is your high, swing high. That is always in an uptrend. That is always your endpoint. So we started this first FIB down here at this swing low. So therefore, our next one is going to be at the prior swing low, which is down here. So we'll run our FIB from here up to here, always equaling the same, and then we'll see where things come out. What other technical elements might we look for? Well, we're going to look at moving averages. Are the moving averages in the right direction? Are they fanning out? Are they doing what we want them to do? In this case, they are. What else? Well, maybe we throw in some indicators. We 
got favorite indicators, and we maybe we add those in there and, and improve our potential here by increasing the probability. So in summary of this section, we've tried to cover a solid understanding of trends to give you a concept that it is a key skill for technical traders. And looking at these things, technical trading is important. Fundamentals can help, but you need to have the technical knowledge to be successful. Good moving average geometry always, always accompanies good trends. Fibonacci numbers are seen to occur frequently in orderly patterns. That gives us better success. When applied to trends, they give us an indication of where price movement might change direction. So it comes down, it reverses, hey, the trend's going to continue, I want in. Many factors can lead to orders being placed at certain points. We want to know about that because it may be in our way or we may be able to use it to our advantage to get out or get in. When multiple reasons exist for orders, placement at a certain level, price is more likely to react strongly. We want to look at that and find them and use that. Okay, so we said there would be a live platform demonstration. And as I mentioned, I'm going to show two two platforms. The first one is FX Trade. And as you can see, this is a practice account up there in the upper left corner. And the, I, if you are new, uh, I strongly urge you uh, to start with a practice account, Paper Trade. And that is important. So uh, Oanda is a great place if you're looking to do Forex. Um, Here's a, here's a great place to, uh, to start that. So um, let's look at some of these. Um, and then looking at this one, we're at the, a week. This is a one-week chart, one each, meaning each candle is one week in length. This is the New Zealand dollar versus the U.S. dollar, so the Kiwi on the dollar. And looking at this, we see no trend. So when we see that, we simply move on. So let's start up here. We'll start on the euro dollar. Now, we see this looks flat as well. But if we put in a horizontal trend line right about here, uh, let's change that color. Uh, red's a little bright. Ah, there we go. Now we can see that. So we can see it's touching here in two weeks, we're awfully close here, and we're back over here bouncing around right on top of that. So we can see the good support and resistance on these lines. And that's what we want to look at. Now, up above, we have more support and resistance. So let's draw in another line right about here. Oh, that doesn't like my color. Let's change the color. Oops, and red. Okay, there we go. So now we can use these support and resistance. We have multiple touches on here, so we know that these are good support and resistance lines. We are currently down on our support line. If we were to break that support line, well, maybe we look at some other things and see if it's worth on a trade. So what would we do? Maybe we go to a shorter time frame. We'll look at a daily chart. Well, let's look at support lines here coming in from our weekly chart that carries over. And we can see the minimal breaks through here. Somewhat of a big number, that 1.0400 that's holding. No closes below that. And up here, uh, so Probably not going to do much on this one. We could down to an hour. And so, okay, so euro dollar is sideways. Doesn't help us any. Uh, let's try euro yen. I checked this out earlier. Let's see. Uh, let's back up to the hour, or weekly rather. Okay. So now we don't have 
uh, a trend per se because it comes down and it's coming back. So on here, we're looking at our moving averages. In this area, our moving averages are all fanning in the proper direction. And here they've crossed. So now there's the potential for this turning into an uptrend, but it is not there yet. So, but for our purposes of uh, demonstration, I just wanted to show you how to draw Fibonacci. This is not uh, uh, this is not one to be used for trading, but this is simply for illustrative purposes. Fibonacci retracement, and we find our low point down here, and we start there, and we go to. Our high point, let's go to this one, swing high, and we come back, and now we have our Fib retracement. So I have highlighted our three lines here, the 38.2, the 50, and the 61.8%. Uh, and as I put uh, my cursor down here on this bottom line, over here will give you the number of the line that you have. But I simply, because these are the three that I'm most interested in, I've changed the color so that it stands out a little bit more for me. And let's do one more. Retracement, always starting at that same low point in this example, coming back up. And now we're looking at how far it has retraced to this point and this point. So now we still have our three lines so these this one this one and this one line up with this swing high over here and what I wanted to show you is that right here so on this fib this would be the 38 the 50 and the 62 on this one the higher point this would be the 38 and the 50 so now we see that our 50 on the high point is extremely close to the 61.8 on the shorter time frame. That creates a cluster. And we have one down here. We have the, the 50 and the 38. 50 from the shorter, 38 from the longer. This creates a second cluster. So I show this not for trading purposes, but only to show how to draw Fibonacci and to also show how, where a cluster is going to look like. And as you can see, there is a lot of price action in those areas. And as it comes back up here, this cluster looks good because we've got now, we've got resistance coming in here because these lines, no one's come up against that. Um, and just to show on the daily, you can't see it as well, but the point is the lines can uh, come back over so that you can continue with that as well. So that is the FX Trade platform. There is another platform, and that one is called Advanced Charting. And like that, over here in the left corner, to get to Advanced Charting, you can simply click on that. I already have it pulled up to save a couple of seconds. And this is a little different. This is Oanda's new trading platform. They are still developing it. Uh, I, personal opinion, I think it's pretty good. Uh, what's most important is what you think. And um, you can see the different methods over here. Um, the CAD, the, the, the list of, of um, watch list over here if you want to put it in. Um, so. Uh, anyway, this, so I'll just do one over here. Uh, let's see if I can find, uh, who have I got? Um, let's see, let's try the Aussie Yen. Where are you, Aussie Yen? Here's Aussie Yen. Um, oops, let's see. Oh, come on, come on. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, oops, oh, that's not. Oh, there's my dog. Let me know the mailman is here. Um, so let's do, let's see if we have, oops, let's get my 
it over here. So, whoops, I need to click that over there. There we go, that's better. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, so let's go out to weekly. And now we can see what we have here. And, uh, oh dear, this is terrible. What am I, oh, um, oh, I'm sorry. Good. There we go. Sorry about that. Fib retracements, here we go. So let's take a look from up here. Uh, let's get rid of that. All right, so now, get out of the way. So now we're going to, make sure we click on that. Okay, we're good. So we're going to come down and click on this. Again, this is only for illustrative purposes, um, but I wanted to show you in the advanced charting how to do the um, Fibonacci retracement. The difference here is that we can see, oh, come on, dog, hold on, folks. Uh, woof, yeah, woof to you too, dog. Um, they have the numbers a little easier to read, and it is color-coded, so that makes it nicer. So just for <laughs> just for uh, illustrative purposes only, because I want to just show you how this is playing out, uh, FIP retracement, we always start at our same point. And I'm going to make believe that we have a different point over here. And we can see how this lines up. We can look for our clusters, our 50 and 50. Maybe in this example, we were close. But um, let's see, we have a question. So anyway, so my point is, this is strictly for illustrative purposes. I wanted to show you that the advanced charting is available. And um, you can use the one that you think is best. They are adding new features to the advanced charting. Uh, it's still in, in development, so they're adding ones all the time. And uh, I imagine in not too long they'll have that right where they want it. So we have a question. Is it wrong to draw the fib from... Uh, yeah, there are... Um, you, what you noticed in, in the two different methods here, the advanced charting and the FX trade, the charting platform will determine which way um, you draw, which, which point you start. The, the end points will always be the same, but the difference will be in this platform of how it is drawn. What you always want to notice, note, so in this case uh, we have um, our Oops, there we go. That's better. Um, our high point, our swing high, is the same as our swing low. And what you want to do is, if this comes down, a retracement is always obviously going back in the direction from where you came. So, um, oh, did I do that one? This. Wait a minute. Let's try that again. Thought I had that right. Let's try that again. So, there we go. That's better. So, that one goes there, and you can see it, re it retraces from our, it comes down, and then it's going back up. So, you always look for the numbers going in the right direction, and that will show that this red area at that level, it would have retraced. So this candle right here, it would have retraced the 23% on the Fibonacci. We don't like that one. It's too shallow. 38, the same. So, but again, this is just illustrative um, to do that. And you always want to make sure that your percentages are going back up the way. So 100% is back where you started. Zero is your end point. And that's what you always want to make clear on that. Okay. So, uh, there we go. So, that was our live platform. Uh, so, now the Awanda Premium Client Only 
webinar series, and this is if you wish to continue your education and to take it to another level. The free education that you get at WANDA is excellent. It's a great way to learn and obviously not put money out of it. However, if you want to take it to another level, Awanda offers forward thinking traders. These are exclusive, complimentary trading educations, but only for Awanda clients. You can learn a simple, easy to follow approach to technical analysis. There is no minimum account balance or trade volume required. So you can set up a practice account and become a, an Awanda client and therefore take advantage of the forward thinking. It is premium technical analysis and trading strategy education course. It takes a modern approach to charting to formulate simple logical trading strategies. It's a total of eight hours and is conducted as four two-hour webinars run on consecutive weeks. And it is obviously interactive so that just as today, if you have questions, you can type them in. So, if you are interested in going with Oanda, assuming that you have not yet signed up, once again, here is the opportunity to take down some notes and see how to become an Oanda client. I want to thank you all for coming out today. I do appreciate it. We hope that you gain something from the presentation. And at this time, I will take general questions about what we talked about. You can type them right into our question box. So I'll give me a chance to wet my whistle. Ah, you are welcome. Glad you enjoyed. Anyone else have a question? You guys didn't hesitate to put them in during the process, which is great. But, uh, best time to do it is when the screen is up there. Yeah, obviously, you're here because you want education. I hardly encourage you to continue your education. This is something that you'll probably be learning something the rest of your trading career. So. Keep it going on that. Okay, we have thank yous, which is appreciated. Now, one last thing. There is a survey that will pop up after the webinar. Uh, it'll take you probably 30 seconds to fill it out, but we do look at them. They are important. We appreciate your input and your insights. We do take them seriously, as I say. So if you would, please... Uh, take the 30 seconds to look through that and um, uh, fill that out for us. Uh, that would be much appreciated. And seeing no questions with that, uh, what's, uh, here we go, we do have a question. Uh, so I put it on placing orders in comparison to jumping right in. Um, if I understand your question correctly, uh, I'll reiterate what, I, what I've said before because I think it's worth repeating. If you are new to trading or if you are new to foreign exchange markets and you like Oanda and you join their program and become a client, they have uh, that practice account. It's a, it's a paper, what I call a paper trading account. There's no money involved but you have so-called money in your fund, in your account, so to speak, and you actually make actual trades. And with that, you can track to see how you're doing. And it's a great way to do it because you can determine how well you're doing before you put money out there. Excuse me. So if you are doing well in your paper trading account, then go ahead and step it up to the next level. Uh, whatever is appropriate for you uh, to go in, but um, I would definitely uh, consider that paper trading account. Um, let's see. Let me skip to you. I don't know about the scripting. Um, that's a good question. I don't have, I'm not, uh, I'm not one of the uh, uh, designers, so I couldn't uh, give you an answer on that one. 
uh, bearish rectangles, breakouts, etc. Yeah, uh, there's a hundred million different ways to trade, and everyone needs to find what's best for them. Uh, because there are so many, you need to find what speaks to you is, is sort of the terminology that I say and um, if you find that uh, certain things work for you then that's great then um, that's what you should probably stick with and and, uh, and work to even further okay any other questions Give me another second if anybody's typing any other questions seeing none okay well, once again, thank you, everybody, for coming out. I hope you enjoy your evening, and I wish you well on your trading career and your education. Have a good night, folks.